Hello everyone. Today we are going to address probably the most frequent question I get uh, in regards to having issues during crate training. So we sell quite a decent amount of puppies every year, maybe maybe 20 puppies a year. And it's very, very frequent that we get text messages, phone calls, things like that asking us about my puppy's whining in its crate, what do I do? Right? Now, first of all, if you have one of our pups um, or you have a young dog or you have a dog that you're trying to do crate training on and you want my intro to how to do crate training, how to size your crate, how to do all that kind of stuff, that video is available over on the Canine Academy online, which you can find at the letter K, the number nine, canineacademyonline.com. And that's where all of our training videos are at. But this video will also be there, uh, but I'm also putting it up for free on our YouTube channel, the Canine Academy online YouTube channel, all right? So we're gonna address how do you get a dog to stop whining in a crate? Okay, so the biggest mistake most people make, and uh, you know, as a dog trainer, as having done this for a long time, I understand I've kind of gotten over a lot of these issues. Uh, I probably had some of them in the early stages, but if you're getting a new puppy, you probably feel bad when your puppy whines in the crate. And stop it. Stop feeling bad when your puppy whines in a crate. Okay, you need to think about it this way. Your dog has a job whether it's a working dog or whether it's just a pet, it still has a job. That job is to not poop and pee in the house. That job is to let you sleep through the night. That job is to go into their crate when you tell them to, not whine and cry, and not chew their way out, okay? Uh, there may be other jobs that your dog has. As far as I'm concerned, your dog should be obedient. It should come when you call it. It should wait when you tell it to wait, sit, stay, lay down. Um, stay in its place, not chew things up, all of those sorts of things, right? Even a pet, all of those are its job. It shouldn't do any of those things. And if you need help getting your dog to be like that, and that's what you desire in, in your dog, and you need some help getting there, check out canineacademyonline.com. Okay, so this is one of your dog's jobs, is to go into their crate and not whine and complain and bark and scratch and use the bathroom in the crate and all the other kind of stuff. Now, the schedules and all that to keep it from using the bathroom, that's addressed in the uh, original crate training uh, video. So let's just jump right into how do you get a puppy to stop whining or crying or barking in its crate, okay? So there's two methodologies that we use. Um, I always recommend, you know, whichever one seems to appeal to you the best, uh, is the one I recommend that you use. I, I've used them both, they both work great. I have certain clients who prefer one and certain clients who prefer the other. So the first option is, if you're familiar with our training methodology, we use a prong collar. Uh, you can get a baby prong for the puppies, the 2.25 millimeter, uh, or like we do, since we have so many dogs and we recycle prongs when a dog goes to a new home and all of that kind of stuff, um, I get the 3.2 millimeters and pups usually start just with three prongs. Um, sometimes two, but usually three prongs on that collar, okay? So when you take a puppy home from us, uh, the three prongs on a 3.2 millimeter Herm Springer prong collar should fit it just fine. Uh, or if you wanna buy multiple prongs, uh, you can buy the 2.25 and then upgrade later. So I take a really, really cheap lead. You can get them for like three to four dollars at Walmart. I'm sure some of the other pet supply stores sell them. Um, but just the cheapest lead you can find because there's a good chance it's gonna get chewed up, okay? And you put the dog in the crate and you put the, um, the little lead on their prong collar, you run it through the door on the crate, and then you close the crate door. And sometimes you have to kind of tie it to something because some dogs will try to pull it inside. Uh, some dogs that move a lot, it'll just kind of get tangled between their legs and get drawn inside. Okay, so you don't want it to get drawn inside the crate. Um, so, you know, you can kind of take the looped handle, um, depending on where your crate is setting, you can just lift up a chair and put the chair leg in the loop. Just something so that it doesn't get pulled back inside the crate, right? And, um, and then, whenever your puppy whines or barks, you just grab the lead, you kind of pull your slack out, and then you just give them a little bump with the prong collar, you say, boy, that quiet. 
okay? Now here's one of the keys to, to either of these methodologies is the praise part. And this is where most people screw up, okay? Your puppy needs to, they freak out for multiple different reasons. I'm not gonna get into all that right now, but they need to know that when they're quiet in their crate, that's what they're supposed to be doing, right? They're supposed to be in their crate, they're supposed to be quiet. So I tell my puppy, whenever I walk into the room, or if I'm sitting there working on my computer or something in there in their crate, as often as it crosses my mind, when the puppy's not making noise, I go, good quiet, good quiet. Okay, I might, depending on what's going on and if I'm available and, and if it's not gonna you know, mess up whatever I'm doing, I might stick my finger in the little crate door and give them a little like rub on the little snout, you know, oh, good quiet, you're doing a good job. Okay, and then I go about whatever I'm doing. The second way you can correct this is you can do what I call like rock their world, okay? Now, this is, if you have a larger dog, you do this a little bit more intently, but for the puppies, when you bump the crate to slide it, and that's one of the ways, there's two ways you can rock their world. One is you kind of bump the crate. So you can kind of bump it with your hand or you can bump it with your foot. You're only looking for it to move like two to four inches. Now you're not scooting it. You are actually like bumping it, right? Because you want the, the dog there to like go whir, 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 and you want them to go like whoa when you bump the crate, okay? So it needs to slide about two to four inches uh, or be bumped hard enough if it's against something, maybe it doesn't slide, but it needs to be bumped hard enough that the dog's like, whoa, like, what just happened? My whole world just got rocked for a second, right? What this will almost always do is it will make the puppy stop barking, uh, sometimes for you know several seconds, sometimes for half a second, sometimes they'll stop barking for a few minutes, just depending on the dog. But the key here is as soon as you do that and they get quiet, so right before I do it, I go, for you that quiet, and I bump the crate. And then they get quiet, and I go, good quiet, good quiet, okay? And my verbal is both calm and like, I'm very happy with you right now. I'm very pleased with you, okay? And some dogs that are really uh, determined, right, may take more of these corrections to get them over the issue. Um, and so it can be easy to get frustrated. And if you're like, good quiet, well, don't expect that to mean anything to the dog because they don't really at this point understand what quiet means. What they are getting the communication from primarily is the tone in your voice. So the more intense portion needs to be for you that quiet. And then as soon as they get quiet, good quiet, good quiet, okay? So that's where the praise comes from. The other way you can rock their world is by, you know, again, a puppy crate, puppy size crate, right? Um, and, and for crate sizing and all that, that's all really important, but that's all covered in the other video. So it's assuming that you're doing everything else in the other video, that you're doing everything right. And then you can kind of put one hand through the, the top of the crate door and kind of grab the top of the crate. The other hand, I usually grab where the, there's a, a connection point that's a, that got an inch lip all the way around the side of the crate. I grab on the back, on that lip, and I grab on the front of their door, and I just go bounce one to two inches, okay? You're just, it's just a little bitty bounce. You're not slamming the dog into the roof of the crate or anything like that. You're just, boom, a little shake, right? And they're again, they're like, whoa, what just happened? And you go, good, quiet, good, quiet, okay? Now, let's get into, um, really quick, the pattern, okay? Everybody gets a new puppy and they wanna play with their puppy or they wanna let the puppy run around the house or whatever it is they're doing, okay? It's your dog, you decide what you wanna do, do whatever you wanna do, but don't call me and complain if you don't follow my instructions. Here is what I recommend, and I've done this, I've trained over 100 dogs, trained probably hundreds of dogs, and if you will do this, you will have, you'll be a happy dog owner, and you'll be able to do lots and lots of playing and enjoying with your puppy. You'll take the first week and really get the puppy into a schedule, but your first three to five days with your puppy, they should live in that crate. They go out to use the bathroom and eat and drink in the morning. They go back in their crate. They get let out. Puppies have to be let out more than adult dogs. So they get let out periodically through the day to use the bathroom. Okay, so don't be unfair to them. Don't keep them in their crate um, and, and set them up for failure where they use the bathroom in the crate. But they come out of their crate, they go to the bathroom, 
I recommend using a lead in the prong and you can start introducing uh, the basics of being on a lead number one and learning to walk with a person number two so that it makes boosts easier down the road, which is heel walking your side. So I put them on their lead, I take them out, they use the bathroom, I bring them right back inside and back into their crate. And that is their life for three to five days. Now what will happen in that three to five days is, at first they will whine and scream and cry and complain. And then they will love their crate. Their crate will be a place of comfort, a place that they can go and relax. It will be like their home. It will be like their bedroom. Their crate will be the place they like to go. Now, it's not 100% really strong right at the end of the three to five days, but that is how you set that process up for success. Number one, they're going in and out of the crate all day so that you get they get used to you just walking up and putting them in their crate. Number two, they're learning really quickly, I'm not gonna be in here forever. I'm gonna get to go out to use the bathroom. I'm gonna get to get out to eat. Number three, I give them like a little chew toy, something that's safe, like a Nyla bone, not anything like a stuffed animal. Don't give your dog stuffed animals. Something safe, and we cover the safe things that puppies can chew on in the Canine Academy, so if you don't know what they are, go subscribe. Say something safe to chew on in the crate so that they have something to do. And, um, and they learn that, hey, this isn't so bad. It's not bad being in here, right? They're going through a pretty big transfer right now. They're, they just left their litter mates, maybe they just left their mother, depending on what age you got the pups from. They're in a totally new location, around totally new people. It's a big shift. Here's what you don't do. Don't feel sorry for that puppy. This is a job. They have a job to do, they need to do it. Don't feel sorry for them, okay? We're not being mean, we are training them to do one of their jobs, and that is to go in your crate, and to be inside your crate without whining, complaining, fussing, or going to the bathroom, okay? That is one of your puppy's jobs. It's one of the things that they need to do, okay? So, do those things, and here's the other real uh, quick thing. If you buy a puppy from me, some people think $2,000 for a puppy is expensive, that's how much a puppy sell for, that's not expensive for a well-bred dog. You're not paying for training, you're paying for a well-bred dog. Okay? The training is extra. So if you are listening to this video and you're going, I don't want to do that. Well then pay me for an advanced puppy. And for three grand, I'll crate train them, house break them, and introduce them to all their five basic obedience commands. Really all eight, including leave it, place, and, um, and crate going into their crate. Okay? They'll get introduced to all those things, and then you'll get them. And there'll still be a little bit of a transition because it's still going to be a new environment and new people, but it will be significantly less, okay? If you're starting to get frustrated or if you're like, wow, this is a lot of work, welcome to my world. This is what we do, okay? So when people go $3,000 to get the basic foundation in the dog, I'm like, yeah, you're not paying me for my work because I figured out how to do this and streamline it. You're paying me so that you don't have to do it. Right? So if you're having an issue, if you just got one of my dogs, you're watching this video and you're like, holy crap, this is too much for me. I need somebody to do this for me. Contact me, $3,000. I'll take your puppy back for about four more weeks and we will get them through all of these situations for you. All right? Otherwise, welcome to my world. Have fun training your dog. It's very doable. You just have to commit to it and don't feel sorry for your dog. Till next time, this is Joel with Fortress K9. Remember, train hard and stay safe.